Yes, another Sunday. God is good. All the time, God is good. In spite of what might be taking place in our world or in our nation, God is good. We need to give Him thanks and we should be praising and we should worship Him for who He is. As we go through our service today, there is such a beautiful opportunity that the Lord has imparted to us. I, I like what David said, that I was glad when they said unto us, Oh, come, let us go into the house of the Lord. And that is to praise and that is to worship Him in spirit and in truth. There's one thing about God and there's one thing about Jesus, and that He is consistent in everything He does and everything He says. He is consistent. Firstly, he is consistent in who he is. Numbers 23, 19 tells us, God is not a man that he should lie, neither the son of man that he should repent. Hath he said, and shall he not do it? Or hath he spoken, and shall he not make good? John chapter 1, verse 1 tells us, in the beginning was the Word, and the Word was with God, and the Word was God. Revelation chapter 23 and verse 13 tells us, I am Alpha and Omega, the beginning and the end, the first and the last. He is consistent in who he is. God is consistent in his domain, in his dominion, which remains steadfast and consistent. The confession of King Dyrus that was given after Daniel was passed in the lion's den, and he realized that he had come out victorious. Daniel chapter 6, verse 26 tells us, I make a decree that in every dominion of my kingdom may tremble and fear the God of David, for he is the living God, and steadfast forever, and his kingdom that shall not be destroyed, and his dominion shall be ever even unto the end. Hebrews 13 verse 8, Jesus Christ is the same yesterday, and today, and forever. Malachi chapter 3 verse 6 says, for I am the Lord, I change not. Therefore, the sons of Jacob are not consumed. God is consistent with his heart towards his children. James chapter 1 verse 17 tells us, Every good gift and every perfect gift is from the Lord and comes down from the Father of life with whom there is no variation or shadow of turning. Psalms 33, verse 11, the counsel of the Lord stands forever. The plans of his heart to all generations. God is consistent in what he says. Genesis chapter 22, 17 and 18, after Abraham was tested and offered, was about to offer his son Isaac unto the Lord, he tells us these words, Blessings I will bless you, and multiplying I will multiply your, your uh, descendants, as the stars of the heaven and as the sand which is on the seashore, and your descendants shall possess the gates of her enemies. In your God, all, in your God, all the nations of the earth shall be blessed, because you have obeyed my voice. And then John chapter 4, verses 1 to 3 tells us this. Let not your heart be troubled. You believe in God, believe also in me. In my Father's house, or many mentions. If it was not so, I would not have told you. I go to 
prepare a place for you. And if I go and prepare a place for you, I will come again and receive you to myself. And where I am, there you may be also. Because of God's consistency, should we not bless him? We will bless him. We will bless him. We will bless him.
worship him, but we worship him today because of who he is. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Hallelujah. Good afternoon, everyone. How is everyone doing? Praise the Lord. Well, from here, everyone is just looking mighty fine. Hallelujah. I want to greet my father. Hallelujah. I want to greet Jesus, my friend. Hallelujah. And the Holy Spirit, my comforter and guide. Hallelujah. Without God in my life, I know I will be miserable. And you know something? I can be miserable sometimes. You know, Sister Bridge, I don't believe it. Yes, I can. You can ask my husband and my children. You know, but praise be to God. I have someone that I can hold on to. And that miserableness usually lives. It doesn't hang around for long. Because I know that my Redeemer lives. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. I want to greet also um, our senior pastor, Vincent Cox. God bless you, sir. Hallelujah. And his lovely wife, Sister Cox. God bless you both for the work that you are doing, in, not just in this church community, but in the community of Luton. May the Lord continue to bless you. Hallelujah. I would also like to greet our pastor Steve and his wife and family. May God continue to bless him and his family. And Brother Raymond, thank you so much for taking us this far. And also to the praise and worship team. You know, last week, do forgive me, I forgot to thank the worship team for doing such a wonderful job. I was so blessed that I was actually singing one of the songs during the week. Amen. Hallelujah. And no doubt, Brother Raymond, I will continue singing the songs that you have worshipped with today. Amen. And you know, we know when worship is good when we take the songs with us. Amen? Amen. Hallelujah. And I also want to greet all those who are online. Thank you for logging in. Thank you for taking that time out of your day to worship with us and to preach with us. Hallelujah. You're, we don't um, take it for granted that you are logging in and we do not take it for granted that you like us or subscribe to the New Testament Church of God. Hallelujah. You know, it's not that so much you're subscribing to us, but you are helping us to promote the gospel. Can I get it? Oh, I can't really answer an amen. <laughs> Lord, forgive me. <laughs> you know the environment that we are in. We have to get used to it, you know. Sister Gillian, we have to get used to it. Just as long as they don't tell us to stop preaching the word. Just as long as they tell me not to stop, what? don't tell me to stop worshiping. I'm fine. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. All right, so. We are on part two of the subject matter. Can anyone remember what the subject matter is? Who are you following? Praise God. And I want you to indulge me just for probably two minutes or less. Do you remember this old time song? It's a, it's a, it's a um, hymn, but I just want to sing the chorus. I hope the young men, you may, have, you may know it from Jamaica. Praise God. And here it goes. Sing with me if you can. Follow, follow. I will follow Jesus everywhere.
Jesus. Follow. Follow. I will follow Jesus. Anywhere he leads me. You know, sometimes he leads us down certain roads or in certain situations. And sometimes it's hard to follow him. Sometimes we say, yes, Lord, I will follow you. But when the crunch comes to the crunch, we don't. But what we say and sometimes what we do are far apart. But today, we will be going in a little bit more just to see what's going on. It's good to check in with the Holy Spirit. Hallelujah. Just to see if we are following him. And can I just say to the musicians, you did a fabulous job. Thank you very much. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. Wonderful young men. Hallelujah. Let's continue to pray them up. Right, okay, so let me just quickly go through what we followed, what we did last week um, for those who were not here or did not hear. I'm not going to go into any detail, I'm just going to quickly tell you what we covered. So first of all, we looked at social media and I gave you some statistics and um, we could see how the world seems to have control of social media and so what we are saying as saints and soldiers of God, we are going to now take control of social media in order to spread the good news. Amen? Amen. So can I just tell you a quick story of something I tried to do? And I'm trying to move with the times, Sister Doreen. I'm trying. And I don't even remember what it's called. Is it a bit me emoji? Someone tell me. When you're trying to do an avatar of yourself, so that you can send personal messages. So the phone was inviting me to do it, and so I kept sort of saying, foolishness, not bothering, not bothering. And it just kept bothering, and I said, okay, let me try. So I went into the app, and it said I must take a picture of myself, and whatever. So I took a picture, and they said I could change it to how I want to look. When they bring out the pictures, it's the Dory. I had a moustache and a beard. <laughs> and I said, what, what is this? And I can't even delete it off my phone. And I'm sure I'm not sending it to anybody. My Lord. And it's not my portion. And so sometimes, when we try to engage with social media, it's not easy. You know? But because we're not doing it for ourselves, we are doing it to promote the gospel that should be good enough reason, amen, to not be afraid of social media. Because I'm telling you, the world will take it over if we don't. Okay, so, somebody might want to go, give me any more advice about that, please, because I'm leaving that alone, so, just in case someone's thinking, let me not go, <laughs> it's okay. <laughs> Praise the Lord. So last week, we looked at John, chapter 2, verses 2 to 8. And it was the story of Jesus turning water into wine. And so one of the things that we learned was when Mary had faith in who Jesus is. I'm not even going to use the past tense. Mary had confidence in who Jesus is. And when he, she told him to tell the servants what to do. She wasn't speaking to him as her son, as such, but she was speaking to his divinity. She was speaking to the power she knew he had in him. Hallelujah. And she said to him, whatever he says to do, or whatever he says to you, do it. Follow his instructions. And when we look at the word, and how do we interpret that for ourselves? Whatever Jesus says to us, do it. Just do it. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. So the next bit we went on to was when you follow Jesus, sometimes his instructions um, may not make sense to us. And so he said to them, 
fill the water pots with water and take it to the master of the feast. And that is John 2, 7 to 8. Sometimes we question what Jesus or the Holy Spirit tells us to do because it might not make sense. And the servants, I think, was in that position where they were like, well, these containers are used to wash, to hold water, to wash the hands and feet of the guests. Why would he want those? Why would he want those? And why, you know, they may have been thinking that, but from the scripture, they just did it. Even though it seemed weird. I think in my experience of so many years, that sometimes God asks us to do something that seems a little weird and we may ask questions. But when you do it, then these plans are then revealed. But he wants us to take a step of faith, hallelujah, in order to do what he has instructed us to do. Hallelujah. And you know something? They said that once Jesus had turned the water into wine, it tasted better than the expensive wine that they bought for the guests. And so the word tells me then that when we leave the things in Jesus' hands, it is well done. It is better than anything anyone could have done. It is better than the doctors and the consultants could have done. It is better than what the bank manager could have done. It is better than what our employers could have done. But when we follow his instructions, it is well done. Thank you, Jesus. Hallelujah. Another lesson that we did not get to, which I will say now, is that Jesus did not perform this miracle on his, on his own. He had to have the cooperation of the servants in attendance at the wedding. Now, sometimes we sit down don't we? And we say, Lord, I need this to happen. But sometimes Lord is saying, you need to do something so that I can work through that. And we have to give God our cooperation. If we have a stubborn spirit, a hardened heart, or we say, Lord, leave that for somebody else to do, he is not going to force us. You know, when you study the Holy Spirit, some of the studies will say to you, the Holy Spirit is a gentleman. And so God is not going to force you to do anything you don't want to do. But he's going to encourage you that this is the way you need to go. And when you cooperate with him, all of a sudden, everything will be manifested that needs to be manifested. Because so many things are already there, signed and sealed in the spiritual, but we just need to, for it to be manifested in the physical so that we can say, taste and see that the Lord is good. Amen. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. And it's so wonderful to see that even when you look at the life of Jesus, he really never did anything on his own. You know, even when it was said, what do you want from me? You tell me what you want, and I will do it for you, he would often ask. He would often ask, what's the problem here? How can I help you? And he's waiting for the cooperation. And when the people showed their faith, showed their belief, he was able to work in it. He never ever barged anybody, you know, maybe okay when he was ripping the people to come out of the temple, well, that's something different, isn't it? Because they were doing the right thing. But when it came to turn up for the individuals, he needed their cooperation. Are we cooperating with the Holy Spirit? Are we cooperating with the Father? Are we cooperating with Jesus? The title is, Who Are You Following? Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. And so to follow him, we need to listen to his instructions. Hallelujah. And we need to cooperate. Thank you, Jesus. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Hallelujah. And so let us now turn to what Jesus says. 
about following him. Because I think that would be really important. What does he say? And so let's look at the first scripture in John chapter 8, verse 12. Hallelujah. And before I go on to that part, I'm just going to quickly pray. Hallelujah. Thank you, Lord. Hallelujah. Dear Lord Jesus. Hallelujah. We have done the greetings. Hallelujah. We have put you in your rightful place. Hallelujah. And we declare this building holy ground. Hallelujah. We have recapped what we have done last week, Lord Jesus. And now we'll be going into the next length of this message. And I pray, oh Lord God, that you will be magnified in this message today, Lord God. We pray that you will be lifted up in this message today, Lord Jesus. And we pray that the Holy Spirit will move in such a way, Lord God, that we will realise that there is something wanting. There's still something more that we can do, Lord Jesus. Let us never be too comfortable, hallelujah, with where we are. But always let us strive for more in you, Lord God. And so we, as we move into this part of the sermon, Lord God, I pray that you will continue to illuminate your words to me, Lord Jesus. He shall know, dear Lord, Lord Jesus, as I speak, O oh Lord God, to your people, Lord Jesus. And for those who do not know you yet, Lord God, I pray that they will make a decision today to follow you in the mighty name of Jesus. Amen. Hallelujah. So we're now going to look and see what the Master says. And so we've got John 8, verse 12. When Jesus spoke again to the people, he said, I am the light of the world. Whoever follows me will never walk in darkness, but will have the light of life. You know, this scripture is so deep. Because we are now living in a world where they're trying to make decisions, but yet they are in darkness because they still are unsure about what they need to do. We know that the enemy is at, in, at work in certain areas, and I think some people who do not understand the spiritual significance of what is actually happening because some people are looking to make money out of certain situations. But as Christians, we really do need to be alert. And we do not have to worry because Jesus said he is the light of the world and we will never have to walk in darkness, but will have the light of life. And so we are his light. Hallelujah. You know, there's another scripture, I believe, in Thessalonians, that says, when we get saved, we are translated from the kingdom of darkness into the kingdom of light. Hallelujah. And so we have been taken out of ignorance. Hallelujah. And a lack of wisdom and a lack of understanding spiritually, and we have moved into the right kingdom. We are no longer in the enemy's kingdom. We are in his kingdom. But what happens if we are in his kingdom, but yet we are still, um, we still have the mind of the kingdom of darkness because we have not allowed our minds to be renewed. But we must remember what Jesus says. If we follow him, we are followers of him. He is the light of the world. And because he is the light of the world, we have that light too. Hallelujah. So we do not have to fear about the plans of the wickedness of men. We can just say, Lord, reveal what is happening and tell me what I need to do. Hallelujah. And it will make the difference. His word says it and I believe it. Thank you, Jesus. Now to the Jews. Now I'm going to John 8 verses 31 and 32. And it says that the Jews who have believed him, Jesus said, if you hold on to my teaching, you are really my disciples. Then you will know the truth and the truth will set 
you free. Hallelujah. You know, some of us are still trying to get free from certain things. We may be still trying to get free from, um, from financial difficulties. We still may be trying to get free from bad and wrong thinking. We may still be trying to get free from addiction. We may still be trying to get free from all manner of things. But the word says that he is the truth. And once we know the truth, the truth will set us free. And so if we are still feeling not free, tangled up, then we need to go back to the Lord and say, Lord, in your word, in John 8, 31, 32, it says the truth will set me free. I am following you. I am your child. Help me to be free of this situation. And you know, and I believe, because the word says it, that I will be free. You will be free. We will all be free. Hallelujah. We do not have to be bound. Hallelujah. By, the, by, by whatever the world tries to throw at us. Hallelujah. Because once we know the truth, hallelujah, the truth will set us free. But before that it says that we need to hold on to the teaching. And this is why it is so important that we are a teaching church. It is important that we are a people who engage with study, with Bible study, with our own personal study. Hallelujah. Because once you know what the word of God says, you can use the word to break every chain. Hallelujah. To break every chain. Thank you, Jesus. So we move on to words of the master and we go to Matthew 10 verses 38 to 39 and Jesus says and whoever does not take his cross and follow me hmm, is not worthy of me whoever finds his life will lose it and whoever loses his life for my sake will find it. Now, if you read the whole of Matthew chapter 10, he was really, he was talking to a group of people and the, the Pharisees and the Sadducees and different people were there. And he was trying to say to them that, and I always found this uh, chapter quite a difficult chapter because it says that, almost uh, I'm paraphrasing, that the, the, the wife may be against the father, the parents against the children, and so on and so on, that there may be um, disruption in the family for the person who follows Jesus. And I think in our community, especially in the Caribbean community, majority of people do believe in God, even though they may not follow him. But when I think about my friend Anita, who was a um, Hindu, and she had to leave her Hindu religion in order to become a Christian, that caused disruption in her family. Her parents didn't speak to her for years because they wanted her to turn back. And so now I really understand what the scripture means is that when you decide to follow Jesus, somebody ain't gonna like it. It might be your employer, it could be family members, but what must we do? We must still continue to follow him. Hallelujah. Because if we lose our life, the life that we had before, hallelujah, we are going to find new life. And trust me, the new life is always better than the old life. Does it mean that things are going to be smooth? Does it mean that things are always going to work out how the way we want it to work out? No. But we have Jesus with us. Hallelujah. We don't have to walk alone. We don't have to be drug dependent. We don't have to be alcohol dependent. We do not have to be dependent on betting and different things because we can depend on the Lord. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Hallelujah. He is good, isn't he, brethren? Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. And now we turn to a more serious area where we don't always go to because we do like to preach encouragement. 
But one of the things I realize is that the Lord has laid in my spirit to when I teach or preach, is to challenge and to encourage. And so sometimes when you're challenging, it can be hard, and it can be like, ooh, you know. But once the Holy Spirit says to do it, and it's the word of God. I am not giving you bruxism. I am giving you the word, hallelujah. And so I pray as we go into this part that we understand why the Lord needs us to pay attention. And so this part is pay attention when you follow Jesus. I don't know, um, what is the, what is the, um, Sister Dorian will know. <laughs> you know sometimes you go to parties and then it ends up with everybody in a chain and then everybody's doing whatever. Conga. And, is it a bongo? Yeah. Conga. Yeah, that's it. <laughs> I'm picking my sister to me today. She loves me, they said that's way back. <laughs> I'm not sure what they do now. But you know, sometimes well, there's another song and they say, follow the leader, leader, leader. <laughs> yes, maybe I should be singing that in church, I don't know. But that brings a bell. I'm trying to be in my brother's house. That's my excuse. <laughs> but if you don't follow the leader, you will get lost, won't you? If you don't pay attention to what's going on, you're going to get lost. And so it is, you know, I'm going to go into Hebrews now and it will tell us what will happen if we do not pay attention, hallelujah, when we are following Jesus. Now, before I go into Hebrews, let me just tell you a little bit about Hebrews. Um, Hebrews, we do not know who the author is. A lot of people have given their insight as to who they think it is and why they think this person has written it. But officially, it is an unknown author. But whoever the author is, they were writing to the Jews. And they needed to speak to the Jews who had converted to Christianity. Because the Jews were trying to run being Judaism with Christianity. And what he was saying to them, you have to leave Judaism aside because Christianity is a new deal. Hallelujah. And that is me paraphrasing at the moment. And so when we read Hebrews, you, in order to really understand Hebrews, you have to read Leviticus. Because you will see it really goes into uh, the laws. And most of us know Hebrews as a chapter of faith. Because it, it beats up all the fathers of faith and it tells us that faith is the substance of things hoped for but the evidence of things not seen. But there is another message in Hebrews that we need to get to grips with. And so our first scripture is Hebrews 2, thank you Sister Dory, verse 2. And it says, therefore we must pay much closer attention to what we have heard, lest we drift away from it. Brethren, the scripture was saying to us, and even though it was really um, targeted for the Jews, we can get a lesson from it as well. If we do not take our faith seriously, if we do not pay attention to the teachings and the word of God, before we know it, we can drift away. Before we know it, we are doing things that we said we would never do. We are saying things that we said we would never say. And so we need to pay attention. Hallelujah. Now is not the time to sleep. Now is not the time to be anxious. Hallelujah. Because of what is going on. And the word is telling us to pay close attention. Pay close attention to the signs of the times. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. And know that the Lord, every day that passes, his coming is sooner. Hallelujah. And we do not want to drift away. We do not want to miss when the trumpet sounds. Hallelujah. The next is Hebrews 6, verse 4. Hebrews 6, verse 4. And I'm going to read 4 to 6. Hallelujah. 
For it is impossible in the case of those who have once been enlightened. So that is us, we are enlightened when we, <laughs> when we get saved. Oh, hallelujah. Some of us can remember the day we got saved. We may have been crying, we may have been laughing, we may have, fit, we may have felt a heavy load come off, but we were enlightened. Hallelujah. Those who have tasted the heavenly gift, hallelujah, surely we have tasted the heavenly gift and have shared in the Holy Spirit and have tasted the goodness of the word of God and the powers of the age to come and then have fallen away. How sad is that? That someone could have all that experience. Someone could have a miracle that has occurred in their life. Someone could have had, where God has fixed up their particular situation, where somebody had been snatched from the pit of hell, and yet having all of that experience, they then fall away. And this is what happened to the Jews. They were going back to the synagogues. They were participating in the rituals and the festivals that were taking place. Hallelujah. And then soon they had fallen away completely. And the scripture goes on to restore them again to repentance since they are crucifying once again the Son of God and their own harm and holding him up to contempt. You know it is so important that when we are with the Saviour, we hold on to him. Because he says that once we are in his hand, he will never let us go. No one can snatch us, snatch us out of his hand. But as I said, we have to be willingly in his hand. Hallelujah. And so if we decide to remove ourselves in his, from his hand and we turn back, the word says it's like we are crucifying him. Again, you know, when we think about what he has been through, I wouldn't want him to feel or think like that. But yet again, we know that he is a loving saviour and he's always waiting for us. He's always waiting for us maybe to repent and say, Lord, I have done wrong, but I run to you. And the word tells us that when we and get close to God, draw close to God, he will draw close to us. So there is always an option, brethren. Amen. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Amen. Hallelujah. And so Hebrews 10, Hebrews 10, verse 23. I'm going to read from verses 23 to 26, if you're making a note. And it says, let us hold fast the confession of our hope without wavering. Without wavering, brethren. For he who promised is faithful. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. There's another scripture that tells us that the promises of God are yes and in him. Amen. And so every promise in the word, it is a yes and amen. It's not that this promise is for John and not for me. This one is for Jane and not for me. When you read Ephesians and Galatians, it will tell you that every promise that was given to the Jews are now for us, the Gentiles. And so don't let no one fool you and say, well, this promise was only for the Jews and not for us. Hallelujah. We too have access to all those promises. Thank you, Jesus. Hallelujah. And verse 24 says, And let us consider how to stir up one another to love and good works. You know, we need to stir each other up. We need to encourage each other to love and good work. And I will say to you, if anybody is telling you to do otherwise, you need to encourage them and say, look, the word says that we should be encouraging one another to do good works and to love. We do not want to foster hate. We do not want to foster malice. We do not want to foster jealousy. We do not want to foster envy. The word tells us where there is envy and strife, there is every evil work. And the enemy works in envy. The enemy works in jealousy. And before you know it, you're doing something that you regret. But let us, in 
each other. Don't condemn each other. Don't condemn yourself. Remember, no, when you get saved and you know you must love the Lord, no guilt, no shame, no condemnation. Tell yourself that every time the enemy comes with condemning thoughts, no guilt, no shame, no condemnation. Thank you, Jesus. Hallelujah. Verse 25. Not neglecting to meet together. Praise God we're able to meet together today. Hallelujah. As it is the habit of some, but encouraging one another and all the more as you see the day drawing near. Don't we see that day drawing near? That day with a capital D. We see that day drawing nearer. Verse 26. For if we go on sinning deliberately after receiving the knowledge of the truth, there no longer remains a sacrifice for sin. You know, it's hard to hear these words, but the writer had to let the Jews know at that time they could not keep on doing the wrong things over and over and over and over again. And the word says that he will set us free. And if we find that there are certain things that have a hold on us, hallelujah, be determined today and say no more. Enough is enough. Hallelujah. Stand on the word of God and say, Lord, I am going to grow in my knowing. I'm going to grow in my knowing and I'm going to use your word to set me free because he wants us to walk in freedom. He doesn't want us to walk a heavy burden and worrying about tomorrow. He wants us to walk in the freedom that only he can give. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. And so, in closing, Pastor, it looks like I might need a part three. Bless your heart. You know, I really do give God thanks. Because Pastor said, you know, if you need a part three, I'm serious. You can have it. And I said, Lord, you're so good. Because I thought I'd have to be talking like a hundred words to the second. <laughs> but um, Pastor helped to relieve me in that respect. And, um, and thank you so much for that, Pastor. You know, God bless you mightily. And so I just want to leave with you. And I will probably repeat it again next week. Um, something that Joshua said to the group of people he was leading. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. And that's in Joshua chapter 24. Joshua chapter 24 from verse 15. But if serving the Lord seems undesirable to you, and I realise some people may feel that, they will lose, that, that there's no fun, in being a Christian, Christianity is more than fun. Amen. Hallelujah. And next week we'll be looking at the benefits of following Jesus. Hallelujah. Then choose for yourself this day whom you will serve. Whether the gods of your ancestors serve beyond their Euphrates or the gods of the Amorites in whose land you are living. But as for me, and my household, we will serve the Lord. I'm going to leave it there. Let us make up. Oh, I didn't realize. So, topic's always falling off. I think the Lord knows what's going to fall off next week. Praise God. Thank you, Brother Raymond. I didn't realize my staff had fallen off. Hallelujah. Let us be determined like Joshua was. As for me and my house, we will serve the Lord. Hallelujah. And as I said, like it doesn't, for me personally, it does not make no sense doing anything else but to serve him. If nothing else makes sense than to serve him, hallelujah, there has never been a problem that he hasn't helped me to solve. Hallelujah. And I'm not saying I've arrived. God forbid, no. 
and you may have backslidden. Hallelujah. The Lord is saying, come back. If you know the Lord has been speaking to you personally about having him in your life, hallelujah, accept him today. For we do not know what's going to happen tomorrow. Be like Joshua and say, as for me and my house, we will serve the Lord no matter what it costs. No matter what relationship breakups need to happen. Hallelujah. If somebody is not going in the same direction as you, Paul said, follow me as I follow Christ. If somebody is pointing you in a direction and is not to the, in the direction of Christ, you need to let that go. Hallelujah. But ask God for the strength that you need. Brethren, thank you for listening. May God continue to bless you. May God continue to cause his face to shine upon you. And may he give you peace. Hallelujah. Thank you. God bless. And I'm going to ask pastor to come and close the service, and he's going to pray and do the announcement. And we continue to lift up our pastor in prayer. Amen. Hallelujah. Because he does have a lot um, of work that he is doing for the Lord, and I'm sure when the opportunity comes, he will be able to share it with everyone. So let's give our pastor a big hand. Are we allowed to clap? Yes, you can give pastor a big hand. Praise God, we are in an age where we are disinfecting and all sorts of things that we're not used to doing um, during our services, but we give God praise and glory and love and we thank God for the word that He brought to us today. Uh, as our Reverend Brooks was speaking to us today, I was speaking about uh, a game that you are all familiar with, Simon Says, and you, you do what Simon says, and, and that's about following, that's about listening and following, and uh, someone was speaking to me in the week about reading the word, and I said, yes, it's important that we read, but it's even more important that we follow what the word says, so uh, I'm really grateful to God that he is speaking to us in the way that he is and we are going to pray we've got people who are watching online and we just want to acknowledge you and thank you for sharing in worship with us uh, social media also talks about following doesn't it so he says you've got people who are following you and uh, we want to be people who follow christ we want to there's some people that we follow and really we shouldn't be following them but we really need to follow Christ. So can you just stand with me uh, today? I just want to pray for each one of us. I want to pray for those who have been uh, still blessing us with their presence, their, those who are blessing us with their tithe and offerings, and we thank you because even though the country has been in, on lockdown, uh, there are still things that we have to pay for and uh, life is still moving on so we still uh, need those things and we're grateful to you, those of you who are blessing the church and the church is blessing the community. We are working a lot in the community at the moment and as Reverend Brooks said, we will have an opportunity to share more, it just won't be today. But we give God thanks. And we say, Father, we thank you for your loving kindness, for your grace, for your mercy. Lord, I thank you for those who have made it out here today to be in worship together, forsaking not the assembling of ourselves together. Lord, we are praying for those who are unable to, for a variety of reasons, to be with us today. But the most pressing reason is this current state of lockdown, which limits the numbers that we can hold. But Father, we are praying and thanking you for your continued presence with us. We thank you for your inspiration 
We thank you for your anointing. We thank you for your blessing. We thank you for your healing. We thank you for your deliverance. We thank you for your for your breakthrough. We thank you, Lord, that you have energized our minds and that we are able to think. Father, we thank you that we are able to move our bodies. Father, we are thanking you and praising you and glorifying you. And Lord, today we are offering to you a Jehoshaphat praise, a praise in advance, a praise in advance of the victory, a praise in advance of the change that we are looking for and looking to. Lord, we look to you, the author and the finisher of our faith. And Lord, today as we pray, we are praying, Father, for those relationships that are strained to be renewed, those marriages, Lord, that may be broken to be repaired, those uh, family relationships, sons, daughters, uh, husbands, wives, parents, Lord, that may be estranged, that families will once again be united. Father, we're praying for those who may be experiencing the financial difficulties. Lord, there may be debts, there may be bills that remain unpaid, but Father, we are looking to you, the author and the finisher of our faith, Jehovah Jireh, the Lord who provides for us. Lord, provide for your people today. Lord, we sing the song that you are the way maker. Lord, make the way for your people today. Make the way where there seems to be no way. And so, Father, we bless you, we thank you, we glorify you, we honor you. Heavenly Father, we pray for the peace of God. Lord, because there are people who are stressed, their minds are stressed, their bodies are responding to stress. But Father, today we are praying for the peace of God. Heavenly Father, I pray that our mental health will be strong, it will be healthy. Lord, our mind will be alert, that we will be in control because you have impacted us, because you have intervened, you have stepped into situations that exist. And so Father, I praise you and thank you today. We are thanking you in advance for those who will Give their lives, yield their lives, accept the gift that Jesus Christ presented us with on the cross of Calvary. Lord, the ultimate sacrifice that he paid on our behalf. And so, Lord, I pray for those who are unsaved, the unsaved husbands, the unsaved wives, the unsaved sons, the unsaved daughters, grandparents, aunties, uncles, cousins, work colleagues. Father, we are presenting those in our lives, in our immediate circle, who need to know you, who need to serve you. Father, I pray that our lives will be a witness wherever we go. And Lord, today we thank you for the tithes and for the offering. Lord, we bless you and pray that you will multiply not only that which is given, but that which remains in the pockets and in the purses and in the bank accounts that your people will be able to meet the needs that arise and that they will be a blessing to others. Father, we pray this today in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. God bless you. God keep you. God cause his face to shine upon you. Be gracious to you. And may 